Good day, everyone, and welcome to the eighth grade virtual graduation service of the Bermuda Institute of Seventh Day Adventists. As school board chairman, I welcome you, the proud parents, and thank you for entrusting your children to us to provide for them a Christian education. A special welcome to all family, friends, and guardians, for you have been the supporting cast of this illustrious graduation class. A special welcome and thank you to all school board members, pastors, and constituents of the Bermuda Conference of Seventh-day Adventists for your continued support of Christian education. A big warm welcome and thank you to all faculty and staff of the Bermuda Institute for your dedicated service and commitment to encouraging our students to develop a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And now a drum roll welcome to our eighth grade graduating class of 2020. Congratulations to you on this milestone of your life. We celebrate you and your accomplishments and wish for you a bright future as you continue your educational journey. Again, I say welcome. May God bless you. Enjoy this moment. And on behalf of the Bermuda Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Administration, we thank God for you. Welcome. God bless. Bermuda Institute is committed to encouraging its students to develop a personal relationship with God, challenging them to academic, physical, and social excellence, thus equipping them for heaven, service to God, and our fellow men. Our motto, I press towards the mark. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, who you have received from God? You are not your own, you are born for Christ. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. First Corinthians 6, 19 and 20.
I'd like to invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes for your invocation. Dear Lord, we have welcome your spirit and your presence into this room tonight. Although our hearts are full of excitement as we approach graduation day, we pause to say thank you, God, for we realize that we would not have been able to do without you. Open our minds tonight so that we can receive a word from you. Put a covering over this building for the entire weekend. In your son's name I pray, amen. Good afternoon. Our class text is taken from Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus, the word of God for the people of God. Amen. On behalf of the Bermuda Institute family, the graduating class of 2020 welcomes you to our virtual graduation ceremony. We have worked hard and now it's time for us to receive the rewards of our labor. But without God, all of it means nothing. Our school motto is to press towards the mark of the high calling. As you join us in consecrating our lives to Christ, we ask that you fully commit to the, to the experience, not as an onlooker, but as a partaker. Dig into the word with us. Sing with Jubilee with us. Tune out anything or anyone that might prevent you from consecrating your lives with us. Once again, welcome.
Salutations, everyone. Graduations are normally characterized by pomp and circumstance. Unfortunately, due to our current circumstance, COVID has taken away some of the pomp. However, we thank God for allowing us to reach this milestone. Thank you to our parents and our sponsors, Mr. Simons and Ms. Stevens. Thanks also to Mr. Edwards and the entire BI family for helping to make this virtual ceremony as special as it is. I'm reminded of three scenarios that I've had with walking along South Shore. In one scenario, I didn't feel like walking, so I never started. In another, I got halfway through the walk, changed my mind, and turned back. And the last scenario, I started and I finished. So today, I want to discuss briefly the three choices we are always faced with. The choice not to start, the choice to quit, and the choice to persevere. With every opportunity that we have been given and will be given, the choice not to start is always there. Should I start reading all of the chapters that Mr. Miller has assigned? Should I start creating the video for Pastor Keynes and start my lab assignment for Mr. Mallards? Should I start writing my code for Mr. Richardson's robotics class? Sometimes starting is actually the hardest part, but with God's help, we will be courageous enough to start the task required for our success. The choice to quit is always an option as well. What do we do when things get tough? When Mr. Swan gives us a difficult math problem with lots of steps, do we stop midway or do we strive to finish? When Mrs. Tucker or Mr. Davis tells us to run four laps around Susan's, do we have the strength to continue even when we're tired? When Mr. Foster encourages us to practice, Mrs. Sun assigns a painting for us to complete, or when a presentation is due for Mrs. Gilmore, do we quit or do we make the choice to keep going? Finally, I'll discuss the choice to persevere. One day, I was invited to go walking from my house by the work playground to Barnes Corner and back. I agreed to go and things were going well at first. There was a nice cool breeze and the walking was easy. How hard could it be? But as we continued walking, it got hot. I started feeling uncomfortable. My feet started to hurt and things weren't easy anymore. If the cool breeze was still blowing, I definitely didn't feel it. I wanted to quit and turn back, but seeing my family up ahead encouraged me to keep going, and we soon finished the walk. How was the story like our journey now? Well, in kindergarten, things were really easy. We played a lot, and we did not have a lot of homework. But as time passed, things got harder. We have to actually study now. We have exams and lots of homework. The cool breeze of kindergarten has been replaced with the hot air of late nights, writing essays, and research. And we know there's more to come. Fortunately though, there are so many others who are ahead of us, like the students in high school now. Seeing them encourages us to continue putting one foot in front of the other and to press forward even when we don't feel like it. In conclusion, we're all in this together. As we pass one milestone and head towards another, let's resolve to be as patient as Kiana, as brave as Kai, as nice as Zerai, and as considerate as Jacoby, as enthusiastic as Kamaya, as entertaining as Jade, as caring as Layla, and as mature as Azaria. Let's be as easy to get along with as Jazz, and as optimistic as Nakia, as determined as Alessandro, and as responsible as Zaya, as reliable as Sky, as confident as Malachi, as helpful as Jazara, and as creative as Sarai, as positive as Jalen, as brilliant as Nazare, as adventurous as Zayn, and as easygoing as Torrin. Let's be as cheerful as Cynthia, as athletic as Denver, as friendly as Imani, and as generous as Noir, as sincere as Alea, and as sympathetic as Amir. Let's be as encouraging as Tristan, as kind as Cameron, and as thoughtful as Rakai. If we do that, and with God as our guide, the sky is truly the limit. Thank you. James Duggett Jr. is an author, pastor, consultant, international speaker, workshop facilitator, and a life coach. He has 13 plus years of pastoral experience with a MA in pastoral studies a BA in Ministerial Theology, 
and a minor in communications from Oakwood University. He is currently earning his PhD in organizational leadership at Southeastern University. He has pastored in several churches around the country and was employed as a pastoral liaison for the United States Congress from 2015 to 2017. James has presented at major events all over the world. He has been the recipient of numerous awards and awards including the Mosley Warren Homiletics Award for Excellence in Speaking. He currently passes at the Deerfield Beach and Riviera Beach SDA churches in South Florida. He is married to his college sweetheart, Demia Duckett. They have a beautiful daughter, Noah Lilly, and a handsome son, James Duckett III. Hello, family and friends, and hello, graduating class of 2020. <laughs> I am James Bogger Jr. and I can't tell you how excited I am to be here with you virtually today. I want to celebrate you. Let me clap for you because you have made it to this point and we commend you for a job well done. Thank you, Principal Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Owen Simons and faculty and staff. Thank you, family and friends. Thank you for the invitation to come and to share with such an amazing class. Listen. We don't have much time together today. I have about eight minutes or so to be able to share with you my heart. So if you don't mind, let's go ahead and go right into our text of scripture that I would love for you to consider today. Isaiah chapter 54, starting at verse two, Isaiah 54, verse two. This is how the message translation captures the word of God. It says, clear lots of ground for your tents, make your tents large, spread out. Think big. Let me say that again. Think big. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pegs deep. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You're going to take over whole nations. You're going to resettle abandoned cities. Don't be afraid. I'm going to say that again. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't hold back. You're not going to come up short. Today, I want to encourage you with this simple admonition. Think big. Why don't you say that with me? Think big. Say that one more time. Think big. This text of scripture takes us into a segment of Israel's history where God is sending a message through his prophet Isaiah to his people. And the message is clear. God is saying, I'm going to bless you real good. But before I bless you, I need for you to expand your expectations. Expand your expectations. Think big. The reason why God tells them to think big is because God cannot fit a big vision in a little mind. I'm going to say that one more time. God cannot fit a big vision in a little mind. You need to expand your thinking in order to receive what God has for you. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You have to take control of your thoughts and you need to be a good steward of your imagination. Uh, you need to innovate. You need to create. You need to dream. You need to allow the revelation of God in your life to push you to a place of success, to a, a place where God will use you in a mighty and a marked way. How many of you graduates already know what God wants you to do? How many of you have dreams and thoughts and visions of what God can do in your life? Maybe you are thinking about your profession. Maybe you're thinking about about some ministry that you can start performing right now. You need to know that you are not the leader of tomorrow. You are the leader of today, which means you need to be a good steward of your imagination. And here it is. Think big. As you transition into this next season, this message you got to hold on to because we had a tendency as we get older and older to allow our imagination to stifle and to get benumbed and dull. But I want you to keep your imagination strong. Keep on dreaming. Let me tell you a story about my son. My son is now two years old. And as he's walking around the house the other day, I noticed that he had something in his hands. Let me show you what he had in his hands. Poppy had this little eraser in his hands. This is an, an eraser that we use on our chalkboard in the house. And Poppy was going like this. He was he was pressing against this eraser with his thumbs. And and I was very curious because he seemed to be very focused. And I asked him, Poppy, what are you doing? And he said, playing a game. And 
I look back at him, I said, Poppy, you're playing a game? He said, yes, and he's sitting here and he's having a good time, and then he turns it this way and he keeps on pressing it, and I said, Poppy, who's winning? And he said, I'm winning, and he, he keeps playing, and he keeps uh, imagining that this eraser is a game that he was not just playing, but winning. Let me tell y'all something. If you can hold on to your imagination, you'll be able to do some things that will blow your mind. I'm excited because I'm already looking forward to hearing testimonies that are jaw dropping, awe inspiring, head turning, because God is going to do great things in and through you, but you've got to learn to expand your expectations and think big. This is why, because if what you see is all you see, then you'll never see all there is to see. Let me say that one more time. If what you see is all you see, then you'll never see all there is to see. In other words, I need you to know that you are a victorious person, that God has great things in store for you. You're not gonna always feel like you're a winner. Sometimes you're gonna feel like you're a loser. Sometimes you're gonna feel like you're defeated. But I need you to know that if you can see beyond what is right in front of you, and you can use your mind's eye to imagine great things that you will accomplish, great things that you will do, then I'm telling you, you can make it through any challenge. You can make it through any obstacle. You can make it through any barrier and you can plant the banner of Christ in the heart of the enemy's camp. God has great things in store for you. Let me tell you a quick story. On a balmy afternoon in 1982, Badger Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin was packed to capacity. Over 60,000 diehard University of Wisconsin fans were there to cheer on their football team. They were taking on the MSU, Michigan State University football team. And when the game began, it was immediately apparent that the MSU team, that guest team, came to play. The score started to get lopsided and the home team was getting pummeled on the field. But what was very unusual was that while the home team was losing, all of those fans who came to support the University of Wisconsin football team, they were cheering and, hot and high-fiving one another and celebrating as if they were winning when they weren't. How is it that these fans in the stands could watch their football team lose, but they can still celebrate in the middle of what seems to be apparent loss? It turned out that 70 miles away, the Milwaukee Brewers were beating the St. Louis Cardinals in the 1982 World Series. If you got real close, you'll notice that the fans were celebrating because they were holding a portable radio to their ear, listening to something and responding to something other than what they saw on the field. Let me encourage you with this thought. I don't care how difficult it might seem. As you move forward, you better hold on to your creativity and hold on to your faith and believe that what you hear in your portable radio is actually your reality. Let me encourage you because we all have a portable radio. You need to take that word of God that declares to you that you are more than a conqueror. Hold on to that portable radio and listen to it real good and be reminded that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Or hold on to your portable radio and know that God is for you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Hold on and you'll be encouraged to know that if you do not get weary in well-doing, you shall reap if you faint not. Hold on to your portable radio. Believe what God said about you is true and know that everything that God has for you is for you. Think big and imagine all of the glorious things that God wants to perform for you in the next season of your life. I celebrate you. Again, great job. I'm glad that you got to this point. Now I need to encourage you to continue to think big. Let me pray for you right now. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this class. I pray a special blessing of covering over them, that you would allow them to expand their expectations so that you can fit your big vision into their minds. I pray, Lord, that you would keep them encouraged, keep them moving forward. Allow them, Lord, to see and experience the favor that you have over their lives. And we celebrate you even now for the testimonies that are imminent, for the testimonies that are about to come. We love you. We celebrate them. And again, thank you for getting to them to this point. In the worthy name of Jesus, we pray this prayer. Amen and amen. Thank you again for the invitation. I love you. I'm praying with you and for you. And I can't wait to hear about the testimonies of the great visions that have now transitioned into manifestation. God, God bless you, and I hope to see you real soon.
Success our future, Christ our present, tragedy our past. Pastor Doug, we would like to thank you for consenting to be our graduation speaker. Your message was powerful and has inspired us to do our best. The past is gone forever and the future lies ahead. So as we press towards the mark, we promise to strive for excellence in everything that we do, knowing that God will order our steps. Again, we say thank you. Good afternoon. As registrar, I have checked the records and am pleased to present the grade eight graduates of 2020 as having completed the necessary requirements for graduation. Jade Adderley. Jacoby Allboy, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award. Cameron Baisden, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award. Imani Bean, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award and Worthy Student Award. Noria Bean, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award and Merit Award for Honors. Layla Butterfield, Alessandro Davis, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award. Tristan Dean, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award and Merit Award for Honors. Torin Euler, Alea Ford, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award and Merit Award for Honors. Amir Ford, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award and Merit Award for honors. Kiana Greenwich, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award. Jazara Griffiths. Jordan Lightborn, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award and Merit Award for High Honors and Faculty Scholarship. Malachi Lightborn. Rakai Lightborn, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award. Kai Lowry. Nakia Matthews, Bermuda Conference Merit Award for Honors. Kamaya Rose. Sky Shrinarine, Honors. Nazir Simons, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award and Merit Award for Honors, Hires Honors. Jalen Smith. Santia Smith, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award and Merit Award for Honors. Zaya Swenson, Bermuda Conference Award, K-8 Award. Zorai Tomlinson, Honors. Denver Tucker, Bermuda Conference K-8 Award and Merit Award for Honors. Jazz Tucker Bean. Sorai Virgil. Zane Williams. Bermuda Conference K-8 Award, Azaria Williams-Thompson. President Barack Obama stated that we've got to make sure that teachers are respected and that they are rewarded. Today, we would like to acknowledge and reward our two sponsors with a small token of our appreciation from our class, Ms. Sonia Stevens and Mr. Owen Simons. To our parents, we are blessed to have you in our lives. Thank you for instilling in us a strong passion for learning and doing everything possible to put us on the path of greatness. There are no better words to use today than thank you. You have given us the greatest gift of all, a Christian education. You are simply the best. We love you. To all our middle school teachers, we all want you to know we've enjoyed our time with you, but off to high school we must go. Thank you for giving, thank you for helping us develop into young women and men. The valuable lessons we will take from now till the end. To our homeroom teachers, Mr. Sutton, Mr. Richardson, Ms. Stevens, and Mrs. Dandridge, our time has been great and you have given us words of inspiration. To our elementary teachers, that where it all began. In the kindergarten classroom where we met many of our friends. We, it's time to say goodbye for now, but we wanted you to know 
We love and appreciate you, and we have a gift to show you. Thank you, teachers. May God bless you. It is our pleasure this year to present the school with a gift. We would like to create a new learning space at our school in the form of a virtual library. Some of the advantages of this new space are as follows. The library materials are available on the user's device, regardless of where the user is physically located. Accommodate different learning styles and tailored audiobook speed and fun sizes to each student. It eliminates the problem of a book being missing or off the shelf. We pray that students in years to come will adapt to this new medium of learning and that if we ever have to resort to virtual learning again, we will be familiar. Graduates, today is your special day. It's a time of celebration. It suggests that you are moving on, whether it's moving up or moving forward or moving out, it's mobility. The challenge you face today and going forward in life must be anchored though in something, something unmovable. We at Bermuda Institute believe that we have provided you a rich education that is anchored that is solid and that is unmovable. You have been tested during this season of COVID-19 or coronavirus or, or whatever. This has been a stressful time for you all, a stressful time for all of us, and yet you have weathered it thus far. And you know why? Because somewhere in the remote parts of your being, you have been able to claim God's declaration over your life. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and plans for a future. People have fallen into despair. They have given up. Suicide and violence is, is on the rise. People are stressed and express daily their frustration, even having to stay home with family. Amazing. Amazing indeed. But you, Bermuda Institute class of 2020, have claimed God's promise of hope and of a future. You have focused on your ultimate goal for your time at Bermuda Institute, that, that was to complete your academic and your spiritual growth and your spiritual goals and continue to press higher than the highest human thought can reach. You have put your face to the wind and one day you will achieve God's ideal for you and all of his children. Today is your time to celebrate in Jesus' name. Go forth remembering that promise. Write it on your heart to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and to give you a bright future. Congratulations and God bless you. First, let me congratulate the class of 2020. This year, has been a very challenging one for you. Mendisa says, says it best. You are an overcomer. Stay in the fight till the final round. You're an overcomer. You're not going under because God is holding you right now. Stay in the fight, eighth grade graduates. As you look to the next phase of your academic journey, moving into high school. Stay in the fight till the final round. You cannot allow COVID-19 to get the best of you. Look beyond 2020 and see yourself as the professional you aspire to be. 
Stay in the fight. Make your moms and dads proud of you. Although this virtual graduation was not what you expected, don't quit. Don't give in. You are an overcomer. And so as you receive your diploma, accept it with pride. You worked for it. Remember, you are an overcomer. Congratulations, parents. Thank you for the sacrifice you made in sending your children to Bermuda Institute. We are committed, given the opportunity in high school, to continue to encourage your graduates to develop a personal relationship with God. Congratulations once again, graduates, and I pray that you will be encouraged knowing that you are indeed an overcomer of the coronavirus pandemic. But I pray more than anything else that when Christ returns, you will also be an overcomer to enter his kingdom. Congratulations. Please bow your heads and close your eyes for prayer. Dear Lord, we stand before you humbly, asking you to create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits in each one of us. We realize that if you are before us, nothing can be against us. As we leave this place, we ask for your spirit to order our steps, grant us understanding and wisdom. Thank you for this service. In your name I pray, amen. Sometimes we cry, always friends nearby. 
You have been watching the Bermuda Institute of Seven-Day Adventists commencement for the year of 2020. If you would like more information about our school, no, if you would like more information about our family, contact Janet Smith at 238-1566 or email her at jansmith at bermudainstitute.bm or visit our website at bermudainstitute.bm. Thank you for viewing. Blessings to you and your family. Have a great summer and stay safe.